What's up, my chemistry students? Mrs. Thompson here to talk to you about gas laws. We're going to talk about Charles' law, Boyle's law, and Gay-Lussac's law. Okay, so first we need to know uh, that all of these laws are combined in something we call the combined gas law. Now, we, on the test, will only get, and on your quizzes, will only get the combined gas law equation. So I'm going to teach you how to use the combined gas law equation to get the Boyle's Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, and Charles' Law equations. A um, couple things that are held constant in each one of these. So it says, along with the amount of gas, so we're holding the amount of gas, we can say the mass of gas, the number of moles of gas, uh, we're holding those constant in each one of these laws, and then we're holding one other variable held constant. So this is the combined gas law equation that you will get on the test. Uh, you need to know what these little variables stand for. First, P is for pressure, and you can keep that in any unit as long as P1 and P2 are in the same unit. V stands for volume, and again, they need to be in the same unit, but they can be any unit of volume, like cubic centimeters, milliliters, liters, as long as they're the same. Um, and then T stands for temperature, but in this case, temperature has to be in Kelvin. And the reason for this is because Kelvin has no negative temperatures. And since uh, it ha doesn't have negative temperatures, when we're using this equation, you won't end up with things like negative volumes and negative pressures, which don't exist. So highlight that. Uh, temperature has to be in Kelvin. Okay, the other thing they need to know are, what are those little subscripts? What are the hanging down ones and twos? Well, those are the conditions. So we have one as our first set of conditions. Notice all on the left side, those are all one set of conditions. And on the right side, they're all in terms of the second set of conditions. And what I mean by that is this. So let's say we have a balloon. Here's my balloon. And it's in its own set of conditions, meaning it has its own pressure, its own temperature, and its own volume. And then what I do is I go ahead and make some changes to this balloon. So I'm going to make some changes to the balloon, and now it looks like this. So it's in a new set of conditions. Um, maybe I just change the volume, okay? And then we could find out how does that change temperature or how does that change the pressure. When you are trying to come up with each individual gas law, what you will do is you'll cover up the constant variable, okay? So it's whatever variable is held constant other than the mass of that um, gas. Make sure you write that. Okay, so you're going to have to memorize each one of the gas laws in terms of which variable is held constant and what type of relationship is it. Is it a direct relationship or an inverse relationship? But lucky for you, I have a little mnemonic for you, and that is paid TV can be good. Now, the paid part means pressure, T, temperature, V, volume, and then C or can is Charles' law, and that goes with paid. Uh, B, Boyle's law, goes with temperature. G, Gay-Lussac's law, goes with volume. Okay, and if I haven't given you one of these already, I'll give you one of these tomorrow. All right, so we're going to go through each one. Uh, first one, Charles' law. Now, Charles, it goes with B. That means pressure is held constant. Okay, we're going to need to make the equation for Charles' law. So what we would do is we take the combined gas law equation, cover up the variable held constant, which is pressure, and then we would have a new equation. So we would write this equation down as Charles' law equation. All right. If I were to graph the relationship between temperature and volume, it would give me this straight line. Um, that means that it is a direct relationship. Make sure that you copy that graph and that you write it is a direct relationship. Let's talk about this thing again. Okay, so remember that I'm holding pressure constant, and it means that I'm looking at the relationship between temperature and volume. When I do that, if I tilt this upwards, like let's say the volume goes up, what happens to the temperature? Well, the temperature has to go up because the volume went up. So it, that's a direct relationship. If I go ahead and take the temperature and bring it down, well, the volume goes down with it. It's a direct relationship. Okay. All right, I 
wanted to show you this clip of ivory soap. So here's some ivory soap. Uh, if you didn't know, ivory is the soap that floats. The soap that floats because it has pockets of air inside. Now, when you put those pockets of air in the microwave, they expand. So those bubbles of air expand and they make the soap get bigger. And that's why you see the soap growing in the microwave. Uh, if you're going to try that at home, please make sure you ask your mom first. All right, now boil. Okay, paid TV uh, can be. So boil is holding temperature constant. We're looking at the relationship between pressure and volume. So temperature being held constant, we would cover up temperature, and we would write what is left. So what's left? P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So that's the equation for Boyle's Law. All right. If we were to graph Boyle's Law, we get an inverse graph. And so this graph of volume versus pressure looks like this. This is an inverse relationship. Now let's see this on the popsicle stick. So here it is holding temperature, okay, if I decide to decrease the volume, what happens to the pressure? The pressure goes up. It does the opposite. Let's try the other way. Um, if I decrease pressure, volume goes up, okay, it does the opposite. So, inverse relationship. All right. Okay. Cool way to show Boyle's Law is this railroad tank vacuum implosion. Uh, this is very similar to the can experiment that you did in class. Okay, so you saw the rail tank implode. Let me show you Mythbusters and I'll explain why. Boiling point. Yep, and that's the whole ball game. A difference in pressure. Filling the container with steam pushes out the air. But if the vessel is sealed while it's still hot and then allowed to cool, the steam condenses and the internal pressure drops meaning the now much greater external pressure pushes in on the surface. And that's bad news for the can. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, it's actively moving. Look at that. <laughs> I'm doing this with my mind. In case you were wondering, this is all telekinesis. All right, so then we have Gay Lussac's Law. He has a funny name, but that's his name. He's French. Okay, so Gay Lussac's Law and pay TV can be good. So that would be holding volume constant, so V for volume. And we would cover up volume and we would rewrite that equation as P1 over T1. Oops, let's see, let's write that. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Uh, this is what it would look like if we graphed it, pressure and temperature. So as pressure increases, temperature increases. Let's see if that shows on here. So holding volume constant, pressure and temperature, I increase pressure, temperature goes up with it. If I decrease temperature, pressure goes down with it. So it is a direct relationship. Okay, here's the hand boiler that you did in the KMT lab. Uh, what you were doing when you were using it, uh, is that you are heating up the air molecules inside of the hand boiler. And so, since there's a direct relationship between temperature and pressure, as you increase the temperature, the pressure increased and it pushed the liquid to the other side and made it look like the liquid was boiling. Uh, we're going to now do the math part of this. So, here are the examples that we'll do. First one, a gas occupies 100 milliliters at 150 kPa. Uh, find its volume at 200 kilopascal. So one thing you need to know is you have to know your units and what those 
units are uh, for. Are they for volume, are they for temperature, or pressure? So let's start with the first one, 100 milliliters. Well, that's a unit of volume. And we're going to call that V1. We're going to say that this is the first set of conditions that this gas is in, 100 milliliters, at 150 kPa. Now, kPa is a unit of pressure, so that is connected to the 100 milliliters, so it is also um, the first set of conditions, so it's P1. Then it says, find its volume at 200 kPa. So it says we need to find a new volume, so that's V2, that's a question mark, and it says at 200 kPa, we've already decided that kPa is a unit of pressure, so that's P2. Now if these two units of pressure were not the same set of units, we would have to convert one of them so that they would be in the same set of units. Okay. Um, we need to know what variable is being held constant here. Let's see, since we are not mentioning temperature, uh, temperature is held constant, so T is constant. Okay. So you're going to look at your combined gas law equation, and you're going to cover up the variable that's held constant. So I'm going to cover up temperature. Now this is the equation that I will write down. So you don't have to write down um, the entire combined gas law equation. You can write this one down. So I'll just write that down over here. And then we're going to solve for V2. So I'm just going to circle that so I can just remind myself I'm solving for V2. Now instead of just plugging in, now I know you're used to just plugging stuff in, I need you to rearrange the equation. And very, very important. In fact, you will lose points if you do not rearrange the equation first. That is because you are carrying units, and if you're not carrying the units correctly, uh, you'll get it all wrong. So, uh, requiring that you rearrange the equation first. All right, so if we're solving for V2, that means I want V2 by itself since it's being multiplied by P2. I need to move P2 by dividing both sides by P2. So, P2 cancels. And so my equation is just V2 is equal to P1 times V1 over P2. Now I have all that information as I've drawn it out of the um, question. This is the equation rewritten. Now I'm just going to plug it in. You don't have to rewrite the equation, but it helps if you rewrite it now in your notes, and then later you can start uh, probably either right here or here. Okay, so let's plug it in. 150 kPa. I'm just finding the information from the list of givens that I have. Okay. So notice I have my units, so I can see which units cancel. Now kPa's are on top and on bottom, so they cancel, which means my answer will have units of milliliters. Okay. For significant figures, I'm going to look at the least since I am multiplying and dividing. So that's 75 milliliters. Okay. And that would be my answer with three significant figures. Um, I am also going to check to see if my answer makes sense. So here is this again. Okay. So I'm holding temperature constant, and I'm going to note that what happened to I changed volume, I changed pressure from 152 to 200. Okay. So that means that pressure went up. So pressure went up. Okay. So does it make sense that pressure went up? And if you look at my volume, it went from 100 to 75. It went down. And according to this, as pressure goes up, volume does go down. This is an inverse relationship. So this makes sense. And it's Boyle's Law. I do have to identify which law. Uh, the Boyle's Law holds temperature constant. All right. All right, next one. Here we go. It says a gas's pressure is 15 atmospheres, so that's our first pressure. And it says it's at 23 degrees Celsius. Because it says it's at, so it means those two are connected. Not just because it's the first temperature, but it's because it's connected to that pressure, that it's T1. So it says 23 degrees Celsius. Now, in the beginning of the video notes, I told you all of the temperatures have to be in Kelvin. They can be in whatever pressure, whatever uh, volume unit, but Kelvin has to be the temperature. So we need to add 273.15. Now, when I do that, um, I'm going to round to places, right? So since 23 doesn't have any places past the decimal, uh, this just rounds to 296 Kelvin. All right. 
It says, at what temperature will the pressure be? So what's at what temperature? T2. Uh, the pressure be 20 atm, so P2 is 20. What variable is being held constant? Well, what, what variable is not mentioned here? Volume. So volume is held constant. Okay, we're going to take a look at that combined gas law equation, and we're going to cover up that variable that's held constant, Then we're going to see the equation that we need, which looks like this. Right, sorry, it's up in the upper right-hand corner. Now, when you have this equation and it's two like fractions equal to each other, I would like you to flatten the equation out first. What I mean by flatten it is I want you to cross multiply. So P1 times T2. So I'm flattening it. I'm cross multiplying. All right. Uh, P1 times T2 is equal to P2 times T1. All right. Then I need to decide, okay, which one of these am I solving for? I'm solving for T2. Okay, that means I need to move over P1. So I'm going to divide both sides by P1. And that means I get T2 is equal to P2 times T1 over P1. And then I can plug it in. Remember that you have to rearrange the equation first. All right, atmospheres are on top and on bottom, so they cancel. And I get. 395 Kelvin, and you can go ahead and leave it in Kelvin. Okay. All right, so then in terms of does this make sense, let's see, what happened to, what did we change? We went from pressure of 15 to pressure of 20. That is an increase in pressure. What happened to temperature as a result? Well, it went from 296 to 395. It also increased. All right, so let's see. Volume held constant, pressure goes up, and temperature goes up. That is a direct relationship. Therefore, it makes sense. The other thing we need to know is that scale of science law. All right, one more. Gas occupies, now we have a cubic centimeters. Um, cubic centimeters are a unit of volume. So that's our first volume at 36 degrees Celsius. So that's a temperature, and it's connected. We need to add to 73.15, and we round to places, right, not the same number of sig figs, but places. Find its volume at 94, so we want to find V2. We have 94 degrees Celsius, which we will change into Kelvin. All right, so what variable is held constant? Well, we didn't mention pressure, so pressure is held constant. All right, so here is my combined gas law equation. Um, I'm going to cover up pressure because pressure is being held constant, and I can see I have this um, equation left. Okay, like I said before, if you have two fractions equal to each other, I would like you to cross multiply. Now, there are other ways to do this. I know it's math, um, and you're welcome to do them, but most of the time students get it wrong. So I suggest you practice flattening the equation first. I cross multiply. And so if I do that, I get V1 times T2, or cross multiply, uh, is equal to V2 times T1. I'm solving for V2, so I'm going to move T1 over by dividing both sides by T1. T1 cancels, and so my equation is V2 is equal to V1 times T2 divided by T1. Alright, so if I plug everything in, Kelvin cancels. Remember, now we have units in cubic centimeters. So my answer with three significant figures, 562 cubic centimeters. Now we just need to see if this makes sense. So let's see what happens. We change volume. No, actually we change temperature. We went from 309 to 367. That is an increase in temperature. Let's see what happened to volume as a result. It went from 473 to 562. That is an increase in volume. Since P was held constant, here's this. T and V, if I increase temperature, volume goes up with it. It's a direct relationship, so that does make sense. And that is Charles' law. Um, we will get some practice on this in class, so I hope that was easy to understand, uh, and that your algebra skills are polished. I will see you next time.